being buried alive. It's one of the most horrific things that can ever happen to you. Today we're going to find out what your body goes through minute by minute in two of the most terrifying buried alive scenarios in the world. Scenario 1. Coffin. One minute. In the first minute of being buried alive inside a coffin, your blood pressure is going to spike as you begin to panic. No doubt your mind is racing with all the scenarios where people were accidentally buried alive. And if you're a fan of the Infographics channel, you probably know of a few by now. Horror stories fill your mind of coffins being dug up only to discover the corpse's fingernails embedded in the wood of the lid as they try desperately to claw their way out. There's a good reason to be scared. If you've been buried alive in a coffin, you're almost certainly not going to survive. But there's always a chance, and if you don't control your breathing, you're going to greatly diminish your odds of survival. The average coffin holds 886 liters, and the average person's volume is 66 liters. That means you have 820 liters of breathable air left, 164 liters of which is oxygen. The average human consumes 23 liters of oxygen an hour, leaving you with just over 7 hours of oxygen to live. But if you panic and start breathing hard, you're going to greatly diminish that time frame. Minute 2. Unless you're a Zen master, your blood pressure will still spike somewhat. At this point, you're probably taking in 25% more oxygen than you normally would. It's going to take serious effort to calm yourself down. Not easy to do when you're trapped six feet under the earth in a coffin. If your relatives or kidnappers were cheap, you've got a chance. If not, this game is over for you. Modern wood coffins or even metal coffins are impossible to escape from once you've got several thousand pounds of dirt sitting on top of the lid. But if you were buried in a cheaper coffin, the wood's going to be much more brittle, giving you a chance of escape and survival. Press up against the lid of the coffin. A cheaper recycled paperboard coffin or chipboard coffin will have some give to it. If the lid is solid, try tapping against the lid of the coffin repeatedly in random patterns until someone above ground hears you. The odds are slim, but not impossible. Graveyards typically have personnel that will attend to a fresh grave for several hours after burial in order to beautify it. You want to make sure that your taps are random though, so the sound of tapping is not mistaken for some kind of machinery or industrial activity reverberating through the ground. Don't scream though, that'll use up your oxygen supply. Minute 3. With your breathing under control, you'll now want to escape your cheap coffin. First, cross your arms over your chest and uncross them so that each hand is at its respective shoulder. Left hand on left shoulder, right hand on right shoulder. Keep the elbows bent and do a partial sit-up by sitting up as much as possible, probably only a few inches. Then slowly grab the fabric of your shirt and begin pulling it up over your head bit by bit. Minute 4. With your shirt removed, now tie the bottom of the shirt into a big knot, making it so the only opening to the shirt is at the head. Then put your shirt back over your head. You've effectively just made yourself a protective mask that will help you breathe as you claw your way to the surface. Minute 5. Now's the time to use up some of that precious oxygen. Start kicking the lid of the coffin with your feet hard as you can. The lid of a cheap coffin will likely have already partially split open from the weight of the earth above your head. This will make it easier to do your work as you try to break the lid open. Minute 10. Even cheap coffin lids are no easy feat to break open when all you have is your feet and not much room to kick. The physical exertion is greatly diminishing the amount of oxygen you have at your disposal, so you're going to want to make sure you're kicking hard. Once the lid is split open enough, dirt will immediately start falling into your coffin. Stay calm. You're rapidly going to have a lot less air to work with, and you want to keep your wits about you as the earth starts filling your coffin. Push all that dirt to the bottom of the coffin by your feet, and once that is filled up, start pushing it to the sides of the coffin. Minute 12. The good news is gravity is on your side. The bad news is if you don't work fast, the incoming dirt can quickly suffocate you. However, by steadily digging the dirt away and pushing it to your feet and sides of coffin, you should have enough room to sit up. Minute 15. If you've made it to this point, you're in luck, because the soil above a freshly dug grave is going to be very loose. If it started raining recently though, your luck has just run out, as the weight of the wet soil will make digging impossible. Now that you're sitting up, you're going to start worming your way upwards. Your shirt mask will help keep the dirt away from your face so you don't suffocate, but you're going to have to work very fast as the amount of breathable oxygen you have access to is going to rapidly diminish. It's do or die time. You either dig yourself out in the next two minutes or you die. Minute 16. Pushing the dirt over your head to the sides, you should be able to worm your way up. The loose dirt of a fresh gravesite is going to be very easy to dig through, so all that's left to do is push your head up and out of your grave, then claw your way out. Now it's time to begin your zombie campaign of vengeance against whoever buried you alive. But what if you were buried alive without a coffin? 30 seconds. It's happened to scores of people, such as those trapped in mudslides or who might have run afoul of the mob. It's even happened to one American man whose entire bedroom collapsed into a sinkhole unexpectedly. You've been hurled into a hole which was quickly filled with dirt. 
If this is the result of being buried alive on purpose, digging yourself free is probably going to be pretty easy. But if you got buried alive unexpectedly, chances of survival are slim to none. In the first minute, the weight of the dirt is going to make breathing difficult, if not impossible, even if you were lucky enough to have somehow captured an air pocket. If you're six feet under, you've got nearly 4,000 pounds of dirt pressing down on you. You're now suffering from what's known as mechanical asphyxia, thanks to all that dirt making breathing impossible. In the first minute, your body continues to use up oxygen that's in your lungs and bloodstream, and suffocation is briefly delayed. One minute. By now, you're suffering from apnea, or the failure of oxygen to reach the lower respiratory tract. Your body responds by sending a mix of signals to attempt to force you to breathe. Given that you've got thousands of pounds pressing down on you, this is going to be impossible, and the attempts to breathe are only going to cause the dirt to compress your chest even more. Your brain has begun to die after one minute without air as brain cells are starved of oxygen. 1 minute 30 seconds. By now, your body is suffering from oxygen starvation or dyspnea. Most people can maintain consciousness this long without air, but if you're in bad shape, you'll likely have passed out by now. Your chest is going to explode in pain as the airway narrows. Your brain is now sending out emergency signals to your body to try and save your life. This includes the shutting down of non-essential processes, such as the metabolic processes. 2 minutes. At this point, unless you're a trained diver, you've likely already passed out. Your brain continues to scramble to save your life by shutting down everything that's non-essential in a bid to conserve oxygen. You'll still have a chance to live if you're dug up soon, but the clock is ticking, and every minute that passes means increased risk of serious brain damage. Your brain has already begun to die, but as of right now, the process is still reversible. 3 minutes. Your organs have begun to shut down one by one, starting with the least essential for life. Your heart is working overtime though, trying to pump the blood around your body as the vessels constrict. Your body is literally fighting itself. The heart thinks more blood needs to reach your organs, but the blood contains ever-decreasing amounts of oxygen. To make matters worse, the constriction of your blood vessels makes moving blood around even more difficult, which causes the heart to beat faster and use up even more oxygen. 4 minutes. The human body is built to survive. And it's an incredible machine when you really think about it. The heart is the most important organ in your body, and it will not stop beating until there is literally no oxygen left for it to consume. To keep that heart pumping, though, the organs are being brought offline. Your brain is notoriously oxygen hungry, but thanks to the death of brain cells, its oxygen use is rapidly dropping. Cellular starvation is in full effect across your body, and neurons can no longer relay signals. 5 minutes. To make matters worse, your body has been steadily poisoning itself due to the inability to expel cellular gaseous waste like carbon dioxide. All that waste sits in your blood, which still contains oxygen, but at concentrations far below what's needed to sustain life. 6 minutes. The heart and brain are the only two organs that are pretty much still operational, everything else having been sacrificed to try to save your life. However, now brain damage has become irreversible. Even if fully resuscitated at this point, you will experience some loss of cognitive or motor ability. It's impossible to predict which part of the brains will be affected the most by oxygen starvation, so your particular disability could vary. What's for sure, though, is that at this point, things get exponentially worse. 7 minutes. Your other organs can easily be brought back online if oxygen is restored, as cells are repaired and rejuvenated. But this doesn't work with your brain. At this point, you're looking at moderate brain damage. The heart has begun to dramatically weaken over time, steadily dropping its beats per minute. Now you would experience only a dozen or less beats per minute. 10 minutes. Brain death is severe enough that resuscitation is impossible at this point. The brain has been starved of oxygen for so long that damage has penetrated deep into the parts of the brain responsible for basic functions of life. Not only have you lost your personality, but even the ability to conduct the instinctual processes of life, such as respiration. At this point, you can be kept alive mechanically, but reversing the damage caused to your brain is simply impossible with modern technology. The heart flutters out its last beat, and with no more muscular activity, your body temperature dips. 15 minutes. Your body temperature has dropped well below survivable ranges. You're now what in medical science is known as cold and dead. However, if you reach this stage and you've been buried alive in snow or in extremely cold conditions, you have a strong chance for survival. The process of rapidly lowering your body's temperature can actually not just preserve the brain, but greatly limit the amount of oxygen needed by the body. People who have been frozen and suffocated for hours have been successfully resuscitated with zero loss of cognitive ability. The act of inducing hypothermia has actually now become a modern medical procedure and used in cases like severe gunshot wounds or similar massive loss of blood. Medical science now has a new term, warm and dead, meaning that an individual is not considered dead until their body temperature has been raised and there is still no brain activity.
Now check out what happens to your body when you don't eat or click this other video instead.